Hi, welcome to the Urban Outdoors from SoCal video. My name is Danny Milton, and today we're going to be unboxing a new camera. So I ordered this camera about a week ago, and we're going to unbox it right now. Should I use the knife, or should I just... So look at our components real quick. Comes with the case. Got the mounting module right here. Comes with a quarter inch little screw on the bottom there. Got our 360 module. Got our 4K module. Display module. Battery. Oh battery stay there battery got the case for the lenses for the 360 got a type c to usb charging cable and a nice little cleaning cloth so we're quickly going to go over what you need to do to get your camera up and running and we're just going to go over a couple of quick settings so that you can get out there and start recording with your new insta 361 r this is the 4k wide angle module this is the dual lens 360 module this is the base module, which is also your, uh, your rear LCD screen. You have your battery, and the other thing that you're gonna need is an SD card. They do recommend that you have a specific type of SD card um, that it needs to be rated to at least a V as in Victor 30 speed. I'll show you a close-up of this video of this card that I use. Um, it is a SanDisk Extreme. I use the 64 gigabyte um, cards. They're usually pretty cheap. I think this one's about 20 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you want to buy this one and support the channel. So basically what you need to do is whichever camera that you're going to use. So we'll start off with the 4K module here. So we got the 4K module. We have our base module. And what you need to do is click these two units together. You're going to see that the, the base module or the core has these four little parts sticking out of it. And those correspond to the three holes in either the 4K module or the 360 module. And you can see how this one has uh, kind of like a male adapter and these are both females here. And what you're going to do is just slowly line up those holes together and push these in. Now you want to be really gentle pushing these modules together because if you bend even one of those little tiny pieces on the connector, you could, you know, ruin the whole thing. So got them both pushed together now you can see that they're stuck together fairly well the next thing we need to do is put the battery base on now if you look at the bottom of the battery you have these four little holes here and then you have the gold connectors on this side and that correlates to what the, the top of the battery looks like and on the battery you can see it has this little kind of swing arm here and that's how you're going to release the battery from the, the other modules. You can see it's moving these three pieces here. So what you're going to do is you're going to line up those holes. First, you're going to line up these four on this side. Get those in there kind of snug and then just push the whole system together like that. So once you have that in place, you can see it's all held together pretty snugly. There is a little bit of space that you can see. There's a small gap in between the two modules and the battery. Um, it's supposed to be waterproof. It has those little rubber seals on there. But if you are going to use this in the water, you should definitely put the housing on it. So the next thing we need to do is put the SD card in. And you're going to see on this side of the module here, there's a little tiny square door. And on one side of that square door, there's two little arrows facing each other. That's so that you know which way the door goes into the module. So we're going to push this little piece here pop that out and what's really nice is that this little door is held on by a small little kind of rubber tether that way you're not going to lose it you know you take it off outside it's not going to drop down into the sand or anything so we're going to move that out of the way we're going to take our SD card and the SD card does have to go in a particular way so if you're looking at the the naming on the you know the branding on the SD card that's going to face the back of the module not the screen but the back of the module so we're going to hold this little door here we're going to put the SD card in just like that and just easily put you know just don't jam it in there put it in like that use your fingernail and push it all the way in until you hear a nice little click now it's locked in there it's not going to fall out when you need to take that SD card out just use your fingernail again just give it a little push the SD card will go in a little bit and then pop right out and you can pull that SD card right out just like that. You can also see right there that is your USB-C uh, charging port so whenever you want to charge the battery you just plug your USB-C type cable right there. 
We're going to put the door back on and when you put this door back on you have to make sure that these two arrows are facing each other. Put that side in, push it closed, you'll hear the door with a nice little clicking sound. Okay, so we have our 4K module on the core here. We're going to turn this on and see what our screen is showing us really quick. Core module is booting up and you can see in this bottom left hand corner that is our video recording icon. In the top left corner up here it shows an SD card and how much time you have remaining to record. Top right is your battery level indicator and the bottom right is what resolution and frame rate you are recording in. Right now it's set to 4K, uh, the aspect ratio of 16.9 which is kind of like a landscape mode. Anytime you're going to be watching something uh, like on your TV or something like that it's going to be in 16.9 and then the slash and then the 30 which is your frames per second. Most of the time you're going, to recording, you're going to be recording in 4K 30 frames per second. If for some reason you want to slow some of that footage down, uh, you're going to switch to maybe 60 frames per second, which means you could, when you're editing, editing that footage, you could slow it down to half speed if you really wanted to. Um, I would just recommend leaving it in 4K 30 frames per second. On the bottom of the screen here you have the low light stabilization box. You want to check that just in case you go through any dark areas or you're recording indoors. Hit that checkbox and you are good to go to start recording with your, your 4K module. Okay, so let's switch out the 4K module with the 360 module. Again, you're going to look for the little slider lever here. Push that to the side. It'll release and it comes right off like that. You're going to slowly and gently just kind of wiggle these apart. Take that 4K module off. Like I said, the four little prongs here on the core module are going to fit into the four holes of the camera module that you're putting in. The dual camera 360 mod to the, uh, the core itself, uh, when you do that you have to make sure that you line up all of the, the lettering on the bottom of each of the camera and the mod that way that you can plug the battery into those. So we're going to push that like that, grab our battery, line up these uh, four holes on the other side, click that into place, and we are good to go. You can see the little, the little slider right here is all the way to the left, meaning it's nice and stable, and it's good to go. Now we have our two camera 360 uh, module on here to do our 360 video recording. Turn the camera on, let it boot up. And you can see here that we're in video mode. The bottom left hand corner is the same as the 4K module. So we have our video mode there. Uh, top left corner is the same. It shows you how much recording time we have left. Top right is the battery level. And bottom right is our resolution and frame rate. Uh, just by default, it goes to 5.7K at 30 frames per second. Um, like I said, if you want to do any type of slow motion or if you want to switch it down to 4K, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the 5K is going to be your best bet if you're going to be doing 360 video and leave it in that 30 frames per second. Uh, on the bottom, you can check that little box if you want to do the indoor uh, stabilization, the indoor low light stabilization, and hit that checkbox. The one good thing or the one better thing about this camera compared to the GoPro Max is on screen here you can actually in in real time move it around and see you know move the camera around into 360 to kind of you know focus in on something whereas the GoPro Max the camera uh, the camera direction is static so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put this into the housing and we're going to take it out and start shooting so got our camera here this is the GoPro, not the GoPro housing, <laughs> this is the Insta360 One housing that it comes with. And it's very similar to the GoPro Hero 7 and all of those, you know, housings before it. You're definitely going to want to put the camera in here to keep it waterproof. Now you can see here on the top, there is a record button and a power button part, as part of the housing. So anytime you put the camera in, you want to line up those. Uh, those buttons on the camera with the outside of the housing. And what's great is, is that 
So you put it in like that, close this up, and lock it into place. And what's really great about this housing is it actually has kind of like a, you know, a, a lock, locking mechanism here. So you can't just grab this and, uh, you know, pop this off and your camera's not going to fall out. There's a little lock me locking mechanism here that you actually have to push to the right. And then with your thumb, you can push that up and come. You can hear it lock into place there, which is really nice. So once you've lined up those buttons here, those buttons will work through to your camera and you're good to go. Um, this is not an Insta360 uh, monopod. This is the GoPro monopod. I'll put a link in the description. I kind of like this one because it's a nice firm handle. It does extend. It extends probably, uh, let's say about 18 inches or so. And you can lock that into place. The other great thing about it is that it's a tripod all built into one. So you can just kind of set your camera up if you want to have it on the ground and record just like that, close it on up. This uh, Insta360 One housing, it works with all of the GoPro stuff. It has basically the same kind of, you know, uh, a mounting system here. So let's say you're going to use the Insta360 One with the 4K module. Now I have it all connected here. And what you want to do, like I said, is have the buttons on the camera line up with the buttons on the housing. So right now I have it in kind of like the normal mode with the camera facing one way and the screen or the or the base, the core module facing the other. That's typically like, you know, when you're shooting stuff, you're following somebody, you're going to be watching this screen. The camera is going to be pointing at your subject. So to line up that those buttons on the camera with the buttons on the housing, you're going to slide it in just like that. You're going to close it up and lock it into place. So now you've got the camera facing one way, your module facing the other, and all of the buttons are lined up the way they're supposed to be. Now what's great about this housing is, depending on if you want to shoot that way, that's fine and it works great. We're going to take this out. And if you want to have the screen facing you, take the battery off real quick. We're going to pull these apart. Now we're going to have the core facing us. So if we want to do in selfie mode, so we're going to flip this around and put our battery back on. Now, if you notice, the core is on the opposite side. So what you're going to have to do is just line up those buttons again. And now the camera is going to full is going to go in facing forward just like this. And the camera will face, will go into this housing facing both ways. And it works out great. Now you have it in selfie mode. You've got the camera facing you and the screen facing you as well. So you can turn that on. And if you're going to be doing a selfie mode or like a vlog, anything like that, you'll be able to see yourself in the camera and or on the screen and have the camera facing you at the same time.